hello everyone and welcome to our next episode of the True Turf Super Series. Uh, in this episode, we're heading back to the UK and to Prestwick uh, Golf Club up just south of Glasgow and like to welcome Dave Edmondson, who is the head greenkeeper of Prestwick. Dave, welcome to our Super Series. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, our pleasure, our pleasure. Um, actually, your title, head greenkeeper, um, and I, you know, I know Prestwick will get into it's a very traditional place, but we have course superintendents and course managers these days, but it's, it's nice to see, I suppose, the title head greenkeeper. For, uh, for someone. It is, yeah. I mean, I was a golf course superintendent in my last role, but it, <laughs> yep. it's nice got to go back to being a head green keeper. Yeah. Yes. What got you into agronomy or in, into turf? How did it all start for you? I mean, I, I worked in my local golf club um, summer holidays when I was at school. Um, and I worked in the pro shop. I worked in the restaurant doing things like washing dishes and things like that. And played a lot of golf when I was younger. And then I was... Um, I used to know the greenkeepers there and I wasn't, I was a bit of a cross crossroads of what I should do with, with my, you know, with my working career and uh, I got talking to the greenkeepers there and uh, they said, why don't you do this for the summer? So from the age of 14, um, I worked at my, my local golf club through the summer, really, really enjoyed it. And yeah. I thought, well, I'd like to, I'd like to pursue this as a career. So I took it forward and I, I studied at my college for four years mm -hmm. Um, within those four years, I did two work placements. Um, I did one at the Wisley Golf Club in Surrey. Um, and then I also did one in Ireland uh, at a golf club called Luttrell Sound Castle. Mm -hmm. And that's actually where I met Sarah, my wife. Yes. Uh, that was nearly 20, 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I did, I did a placement there, came back to the UK. Did um, I worked at a golf club in Lancashire for six years. Um, got made up to deputy head greenkeeper quite quickly. Mm -hmm. It was quite an interesting project, really, because we were renovating all the all the greens um, there, doing woodland management, drainage, um, relevelling tees. So I did uh, I did six years at Pen with them. Um, I then got an opportunity to work in Paris, and something I'd always wanted to do: go and work abroad. Mm -hmm. So. I worked at a golf club called um, Golf de saint nom le Bretèche, which is quite near Versailles. Yeah. Um, I worked for an American superintendent, a guy called Bill Warnock. Um, I think he was really the turning point in my career. Bill it was a very is a very scientific kind of guy. Um, we had a big team there. Um, it was quite interesting, really, because I'd only done school um, schoolboy French. Uh, I had a French speaking team. Of thirty guys, right? Okay. Um, so I think there was like two of us who spoke uh, who spoke English, uh, and like three of us actually. I think there was uh, there was Bill, there was a lad from Bristol in the UK, and, and myself. So I had to learn quite quickly, uh, which yeah, was, you, which was were really you good fun. By the end of it, <laughs> I think I think I could get by okay. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, uh, I can speak greenkeeping French, so it's yes. not uh, it's yeah, not too right. bad. Um, so I did three years there. We did a European tour event. We did the Sevi Trophy, mm -hmm. uh, which was really good. Bill had done a lot of um, a lot of tournaments. He'd done the Lancome Trophy there sixteen times, and right. uh, he said to me, he "said um, I want to give you this experience of going through the events um, right from the very very start. I want you to run the team um, through the events and I'd work with the European Tour agronomists and things like that." So that was uh, that was fun. It was a, a lot, a really good learning curve. Um, so yeah, thoroughly enjoyed my time in Paris. Wanted to stay in uh, in continental Europe, and I got a chance to work at Royal Ostend Golf Club in Belgium. Mm -hmm. um, that was fun. Um, half my team were French speaking um, from the south, and the guys from the north are Flemish speakers, but yep. they 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 put us English speakers to shame. They all speak about five different languages. Yeah. So that was, that was quite, quite good. It was, um, it was good experience. After, um, after three years in, in Belgium, I got an opportunity to go to Dublin, um, where I worked at the Island for eight and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, class, classic Lynx golf course, um, nice. just north of Dublin. Superb site, absolutely fantastic. The, the dunes and the layout of the place is, was, was top notch. Um, within my time there, I did five regional qualifiers for the RNA mm -hmm. um, for, the, for the Open Championship, which yep. I thoroughly enjoyed. We did various national events, and in uh, 
2019, we um, we had we co-hosted the amateur championship with uh, Pomona Paul Paul Golf Club, mm. which was um, which was good. Um, thoroughly enjoyed that. It was great to see the you know the best amateurs in the world um, playing your golf course. Yeah. So after that, um, the club went on a renovation. Um, they carried out a renovation program. They changed the whole front nine. Um, altered greens, um, fair, made two new holes, um, and it was um, it was it was a big big project. So as the, as the last lot of turf went down, uh, COVID hit. Um, so yep. it was kind of over over to you, Dave. Really, yeah, yeah. my team, my team, my team got reduced to. They were doing a three day week. Yep. I, I appeared to be spending all my time on the golf course, uh, doing the growing for when the for when the members came back. Mm. So um, yeah, it was quite interesting. Um, I had Sarah, my wife, out there hand watering in the evenings. Um, <laughs> we we got through it, and it yep. was uh, it was a success. Um, I think at that time of being in Dublin, I think, gosh, it was just such a, a full on kind of eight and a half years. And I thought yes. I'm ready for that, that, that next step in my career. And um, I, uh, I got an opportunity to come to Presswick Golf Club and it's been an absolutely fantastic move. I've met some brilliant people and I'm, mm. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, it's what a journey of pain it's, and it sounds so interesting as well. And I know you've I've seen some some stuff you said before, but touching on that international experience, I suppose the wonders of the turf industry means your skills are transportable, but you get to learn new skills in different locations. So, how important was that in developing your career to spend some time in other geographic locations? I think it was been it's been really good. I mean, you're working with various different individuals, you're work, working with various different committee members. Yes. Everybody everybody operates. Um, in a different way it's really it's been really really good to meet lots of contacts um it's, it's also been good to work with different teams as well look at the way that they do things as as teams and as, as clubs mm-hmm. um yeah so i think it's been i think it's been it's been brilliant and if i can kind of try and pull all the best bits that i've learned down my journey together i think it molds me to be a better better golf course superintendent head green keeper yeah no that's great advice absolutely I was having a look at obviously where you are now, but also the links, um, the, the Island Golf Club, where you were linked superintendent there, and it is truly some of the visuals you see there. It's and it's, I think it's something special about Links Golf. Um, the way you know, obviously that's the whole premise of of the uh, the course, meeting the sea and the and the farmland, I suppose originally, but um, just some great visuals of of that that golf course in in Dublin. There and it must have been a real pleasure to work there, as you say, and and see see it over those eight years grow and, and prosper. Definitely, it was it was a fun project, and um, yeah, I mean, it had, it had its challenges with the weather. The weather was totally different to it is here on the west coast of Scotland. Um, but, I mean, we went for a full full species conversion on greens from um, a small amount of fescue to um, and bent um, to full fescue greens, which was which was a great experience as well going through that process, and it was really really rewarding seeing the results at the end of it. Yeah. A little bit about Presswick now for those that um, uh, don't know much about the facility. If you can give us a rundown about Presswick, because it's been around for a very long time, and as I said, steeped in tradition. And old Tom Morris was the the first keeper of the greens, I suppose, at Presswick so many years ago. He, he was indeed, and it's his, it's his birthday on the 16th of June, which is in a couple of days' time. And, um, you know, the founding venue of the Open Championship. So give us a rundown on Presswick. Well, the club was first founded in 1850. Mm-hmm. Um, it was originally a 12-hole course. Um, it was laid out by um, Tom Morris. Mm-hmm. Um, we still have um, we still have six of the original greens yes. uh, that are in play today, um, which is which is pretty cool and, and unique. It's not been touched too much. Our last change was in the mid 1920s, where um the 11th green was formed i think it was by um dr mm-hmm. alistair mckenzie so we are a very very um traditional club i suppose what they've said about presswick is it's you know one of those handful of clubs that have shaped the game um and i suppose what you say there with the original founding of the open course and and the 12 holes um you know it really has been steeped in history the I suppose there's also they've named the holes and obviously there's a few there like the railway which runs the first i think around but 
having those six original greens, I think it's the only one of the only championship venues in the world that still has its original original greens in play and um, certainly one of those and people see when they go and visit uh, the club website I think it's the 17th hole which was the original second I think that's the oldest championship golf uh, oldest championship golf hole in in the world I think like they're saying and so um, and it, once again a few of those holes at, at Presswick as well have got blind tee shots or um, a par three with a blind tee shot, the, the 17th as well with a blind second shot. So it's something that's very unique to the venue. It, it is. And it's um, sometimes you have to, you know, you stand on 17, the second um, Sahara and you look mm. over there and you think, wow, this has been, this has been, this has been played since, um, since 18, 1850. So yeah, um, yeah it's, uh, it's pretty unique, really and pretty special place. Yeah. And a bit about the club as well. I know I've I've had the uh, uh, the pleasure of a couple of conversations with you over a over a drink in Harrogate uh, uh, at the, the bigger shows, but um, and obviously meeting your lovely wife Sarah as well. I think she still works at the at the club as well, doesn't she? In the in the clubhouse, is that right? Yeah, she does. She works in the members' bar. Uh, yeah. She thoroughly enjoys it. So yeah, it's good. And one of the things I had from the conversation with you and Sarah was the the openness and welcoming nature, I suppose, of of Press Week. Now you do think maybe this an old club steeped in tradition. But from what you told, you've told me as well is that they're very welcoming and, and, and giving with people that are coming to the club to get that press week experience. It's, uh, it's fantastic. I mean, we've got one of the uh, a really big um, dining room table. Uh, mm. I think it seats about 30 people. Uh, and it's so cool because um, if, um, if, you know, if you've got a group, say, say you, you and your mates were coming over from, uh, from ours yep. um, and you came in first, you'd sit at the head of the table the next group, say they were coming from the US or the next group coming from, from Britain, everybody fills the table up and the members yep. are, are, are in there as well having lunch and the chats and the conversations are, are fantastic. And I think that's that's something special about Presswick. That's that's how relationships are formed, isn't it, in, in, the, in the world of golf, really? Yeah, it's absolutely right. And especially when you're at a special place and then to have that welcoming aspect to it, I think it just adds to the whole experience of, of coming to uh, to play at such a such a a, a wonderful place um with the 150 open 150th anniversary of the open the club went through a pretty special project didn't they that got you uh, and the team nominated uh, as a a project of the year with bigger talk us through what uh, that was and what the what the club set out to do to to recognize the 150th open yeah, well, I mean, when I first when I first started here, I was I was informed about this project. There was a, a committee formed who did a fantastic job, um, and it was we were going to lay out the original twelve holes. There's a lot of historic maps and uh, um, here at, uh, at Presswick, and um, I remember standing on the the original site of the first tee. I don't know if you've um, you've seen any pictures? We've got a mm. um, some a can which marks the where the first shot of the yes. um, open was played from, and um, up to sixteen green. And I'm thinking, crikey, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, rough through there, and uh, we had to form a fairway. Yeah. Um, so we took we, we took that all down, formed the fairway. Um, as I said before, we had to have six original greens, which that was dead easy. Um, mm. The rest were on fair. The rest were on fairways. Um, being predominantly fescue, it was quite easy to make a putting surface out of those uh, areas. And then there was the whole seven, um, where it was a small kind of, it's like a marshy area just to the right of the current uh, 15th green. Uh, the team stripped that back, um, the rough vegetation there. We got some fescue turf off our driving range um, and, and formed a putting surface. Mm. So when October came, um, it was really, really good. We had visitors from all over the world. We had um, matches against um, the Honourable Company, the RNA, to to to, to mark uh, to mark the occasion. And it was just two weeks of golf, um, and it was fantastic. Um, the members played with Hickory clubs, some yeah. of them. Um, I don't know if you've looked at the plan for it, but it's um, it's quite an interesting one. Is is the twelve hole course? There's a lot of crossovers because there was only eight people played in the original Open Championship. That's exactly um, right. Think, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and, think, and, and I think it was all played in a day. I think as well, it was uh, thirty six holes, three loops of twelve holes in the day, and uh, a bit different to the the week long event and the four days now of most tournament golf. 
yeah it was uh it was quite quite unique so um yeah it was i can only imagine how 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 things have changed i mean yeah. i've been having been to 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 open championships in recent years and then thinking back to the days of when uh, when old Tom was was playing and all these all these greats of the game of, of golf. Yeah, exactly right. It's amazing, and you may be able to tell people. I can't remember the actual yardage now off the top of my head for that original first hole, but it's uh, I suppose it was more like a par six. I think I've read in the in the relation of distance of that that original first hole. I wouldn't be able to tell you the exact yardage, but it's up around about six hundred yards, mm. and. Um, Young Tommy Morris um, made a three there, so that's uh, that's pretty interesting. It's, it's it's a cool one for the caddies to tell um, to tell our visitors, and it's what, what a great story. Well, especially considering the equipment that would have been used back in those days, as you say, the hickories and probably a feathery ball, I suppose as well. Uh, I'm not I'm not too sure of the timeline, but the equipment would have been vastly different. And to hit an eagle, uh, make an eagle three over uh, <laughs> over um, that that yardage with that equipment uh, is amazing. It's incredible, isn't it? It really yeah. is. Yeah, that's right. So, um, yeah, a great project and obviously returning it and it got a lot of traction around the world. You know, you see a whole lot of media that was, was sprung out. So great recognition for the club. Um, so the course now, obviously, 18 holes and, and matching in those original sightings of the greens. Have they been rebuilt over the journey or are they still, you know, relatively original? Everything is is relatively original. Yeah. It's... Um, <laughs> <laughs> when when the club went from a twelve hole course to an eighteen hole course, they acquired some land, and yep. um, that's that that's now the the current layout. I think they they played the Open Championship maybe a couple of times yep. over the current eighteen holes, but the the vast majority of it was was played over over the twelve holes. Mm. So, how do you go then managing? Um, you know, obviously, once again, a seaside course. I know we we're just talking earlier before we hit record in relation to you going through a bit of a dry spell at the moment. So you've got a fescue bent mix in grasses uh, across the course. So tell us through some of the challenges, I suppose, that you've got from a from a, a, a greenkeeping aspect in managing this facility and, and keeping it up to the standard you want to. I think, um, I mean, I always say to people, I mean, Presswick's a very, very quiet club um, compared to my to my previous mm. um, my previous employers. So that, that's really, really beneficial. Um, we don't get as much traffic as I have had at previous previous places. Yeah, I like to I like to manage my turf um, in a traditional and sustainable way. Um, we don't use any fungicide here. We use very very little herbicide on the course. And I think you know I, I'm I'm a guardian of Presswick Golf Club, and I, I want to carry on the work that's been done previously and. Um, very 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 um you know we're very traditional in our management and um we we don't take heights of cut down too low mm -hmm. and um, we do reg regular overseeding wetting agents are really beneficial in this kind of weather um so uh, we we utilize those but uh no not not changing too much to try and mm. try and stick in as, as traditional way as, as possible really yeah. with how we manage our turf yeah i noticed you posted recently you you know you you're always a key measure for you is you love to hear the thump of the ball on the ground um, as uh, you know, as you're approaching the putting services and you know, you've been going through a bit of a process or organic matter reduction within, within your uh, surfaces too um, to help that year round green firmness. So tell us a bit about what you're doing there to, to, you know, reduce that organic matter and, and keep it uh, a really clean surface. Well, we um, when when I first started here, um, we we had organic matter levels around about six six point five to seven percent, slightly higher on some on some of the greens that don't get as much play in the winter yeah. out of the back section near, near the screen keeping compounds. Um, so we went on a heavy top dressing program. Um, we've put out two hundred tons of sand um, per annum. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to carry on. We're, we're going to carry on with that for this year, and then. Um, it's just quite interesting, really, looking at um, the results that we've got back when we've had our agronomy visits. How we've how we've reduced. Um, we're in a we're in a, a decent place now. I think we've we've still we're we're down to we're down to less than five percent now. So mm -hmm. when you when you talk about the when you talk about our firmness, um, we're, we're getting that, and I think people are enjoying the golf course like that. It's um, you know that 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 kind of firmness. It um, it makes makes you think your way around a golf course, which is uh, which is fun. Very much so, and that's the uh, great thing about Lynx Golf, isn't it? Not you know, you're not flying it to the hole. You've got to think about where you're landing the ball and 
using the contours to run it up. So it's certainly a, a different style to American golf, a little probably a, bit, a little bit similar to the sand belt here in Australia, um, but certainly those links courses where you've got to plot your way around rather than firing at flags is a is a great way to to play the game. Yeah, it's um, it's, it's great, and uh, even even my staff are the same. Dave, I can hear that echo. Um, yeah. Everyone, everyone's everyone's done a great job, and um, we just keep keep going forwards and try and improve our surfaces botanically. Try and get a bit of fescue in, a bit more fescue into mm-hmm. that blends, yep. um, and just keep 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 making the best surfaces that we we can on a on a daily basis. Mm. And the great thing, you've got a couple of our um, our true turf rollers there. How what does how does rolling play a part in your um, maintenance schedule on your course? I um I use them I use them a bit in the in the winter in the winter periods uh, when we've kind of skip skip moles and things like that. Um, I will use them around bigger competitions um, to gain a little bit of green speed. Mm. Um, and also, also it's great if we can kind of skip models in the summer as well. We're, we're, we're quite religious about monitoring our um, clip volumes. If the clip volumes go, go too low, um, we'll stick a roller out there. It's, um, it's, yeah. it's quicker for the guys to, to get around and um, it's just less stressful on the, on the turf as well. So, yeah, it's a really nice option to have. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit. I know it's um, it's really something that's being talked around now is about the clip volumes. And tell us what, tell us how you, I suppose, measure or, or what the parameters are that you set in to, to and we, as you said there, just touching on managing the health of the plant because that's very important, uh, as you say, especially when you're not using a lot of chemicals on, on the course as well, which is a great way to be. So tell us a bit about the clip volume and, and how you're managing that or what the what you're looking for, I suppose, in, in relation to that. Yeah, I mean we uh, we run quite a low um, a low growth ratio here because we don't we don't get a lot of traffic. We don't mm. need that kind of um, that kind of recovery. So clippings are collected on a daily basis. Um, that goes into a, a big a big spreadsheet that I pulled mm. off line. I think it was um, Jason Haynes um, out in the states who created that. Mm. And it's just interesting to look to look at our practices. Um, it's it's really interesting to see if there's any differences between mowers. We do a lot of hand mowing here. Um, it's um, it's just useful information. I mean, I was on holiday last week, and Davey, my assistant, was loading the information up, and I can have a look at that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Same 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 with the pogo readings as well, uh, the moisture readings. Um, great tools. Just keeping everything on there, um, keeping everything you know how we want it in our parameters. Yeah. Um, like I say, I don't I don't grow much grass out here. If I can. Yeah grow mi- minimal amounts well that's better really so um, yeah it's been really really interesting we've done nearly uh, we've done about a year of it now to clip volume uh, stuff and um it's it's interesting to, to to look and see how we're how we're performing and also use that information around big club competitions as well can we lower that clip volume to get mm-hmm. a bit of green speed are we going through busier periods do we need to up that up a little bit put a little bit more fertility yeah. do we need to use plant growth regulators i try to stay away from them as much as possible but i've got that option up my sleeve so yeah it's been uh, it's been been really interesting mm. oh that's good and um just around the bigger uh, uh you were part of the delegation to the golf industry show over in orlando uh, earlier this year how was that experience for you and what did you learn going out of that trip it was um, it was fantastic. It was the second time I applied. I wasn't uh, I wasn't successful the first time, yeah. uh, so I thought, right, this is not this is not going to beat me there. So I'm going to uh, going to apply again. And there was ten of us went from the UK. Mm. I was it was it was fantastic. Um, the the thing that I really really liked about it is um, I met nine other guys that I probably wouldn't have come uh, across in my circles. Yeah. They were from Parkland golf courses. Yeah. They were from various parts of the UK. I mean, I, I, you know, you, you, in in this game, I think you've got you've got your mates who you're quite close to. I, I've got some really good friends um, in Link Screenkeeping, but it was really nice to spend time with with those guys. Yep. Um, we went we went to the show a couple of days. We had to do um, a couple of a few hours on the bigger stands. Mm. Um, we went to did some site visits. We went to to Lake Nona, um, which was which was fun. Um, and yeah, it was it was a brilliant experience, and I would really recommend it to to anybody to mm. to to go for that. And it's it just yeah, I just think it's uh, it, it's good. And we've got a WhatsApp group now, and we we talk okay. still on it, and people bounce ideas, and and that's what it's all about, isn't it? Really, it's it's good. 
Yeah. The superintendent network is such a wonderful thing, and those opportunities allow you, uh, you know, allow the opportunity for you to extend that network, and I suppose ask people different questions and and uh, and find out answers is is a great uh, aspect of the industry. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, I think that's one of the best things about our industry. Um, you can, uh, there's always somebody who um, has done something that you have never done before, and if you want to, if you want to ask that question. Everyone's really, really willing to to share ideas and experiences, and like I say, I've been lucky lucky enough to meet people from from all over the world through through my career. So it's uh, it's it's really really good. You can always yeah. catch up with people at uh, BTME and places like um, and places like going to GIS in in America. So it's it's fun. I've met some really good friends in this industry. Oh, that's I really that's, enjoy it. that's great to hear. And, and look at you now. Hey, who would have thought? 20 years ago or whatever the, the timeline was that you'd be uh, be where you are. So if you, you know, I suppose the turf industry gives is such a great industry to work in and, and from a golf point of view as well. Um, what advice would you give to someone that wanted to start a journey in turf today? I would say travel, definitely yeah. travel. If, if, you, if you fancy it, go and travel, go and get the experiences, meet people, work for various, various superintendents, pull all, all that you'll learn on your travels together uh, and form yourself to be uh, to be the best the best golf course superintendent head green keeper that you can be yeah well that's that's some great advice and and very well put uh, well Dave really appreciate the opportunity I know it's uh, you know early in the morning over there so you've probably already got the team out in the course um, but we really appreciate you being part of this true turf super series and uh, certainly look forward to uh, connecting with you again hopefully in the near future thank you very much for Good on you, Dave. Thanks, mate.